Hello everyone, it's Miss Elsby here. This week we've been looking at using the language of size. We've been looking at the height, whether they are tall or short. We've been looking at things if they are big or small. We've been looking at length, whether they are long or short. And today we're looking at something called the breadth. That means if something is narrow or wide. So let's see what we can find. On this page, I'm going to be looking at widths. Can you say width? That means I'm looking at how, how wide something is. Let's have a look what I found. First, I found a picture of a wide road. I know this is a wide road because it has lines in the middle of it, which means there are spaces for two cars either side. So one can go one way and one can go the other. Now, I found a picture of a wide paintbrush. I can see this is a wide paintbrush because there are lots of bristles on it. That will be perfect for painting your walls. Next, I found a picture of a wide window. I know this is a wide window because it's very big and I can see lots of things out of it. Finally, I found a picture of a wide river. Now, I know this is a wide river because you can see how big it is in between the mountains either side of it. Imagine how many boats you could get on that river. Now, using your super looking eyes, can you look around the room that you are in and see if you can find anything that is wide? On this page, I'm going to be looking at things that are narrow. That means that they are going to be thinner than the wide things we have already seen. The first picture I found is of a stream. Now, I know this is, a, this is narrow. I can describe this stream as narrow because it is much thinner than the picture of the river that I found. And you definitely wouldn't be able to get any boats in there because it's much too thin. It's much too narrow. Next, I found a picture of a narrow paintbrush. I know it is a narrow paintbrush because there are not as many bristles on it as the wide paintbrush that I found. So where my wide paintbrush could do lots of painting on the walls, this paintbrush would not be able to do as much because it's only, it's much smaller. For my next one, I found a picture of a narrow road. Now I know this is a narrow road because I can see it will only fit one car on it. My previous picture could fit two cars on it, like a normal road that we see every day. But this one can only fit one car because it has one lane, a narrow road. Finally, on this picture, I found a narrow window. Now, I know this is a narrow window because it's much thinner than normal windows and you can't see as much out of it. Now, use your super looking eyes to look around the room that you're in and see if you can find anything that is narrow. Now let's have a look at these pictures and see if we can tell which one is wide and which one is narrow. I can see the paintbrush on the right, where the arrow is, is wide because it's much bigger than the other paintbrush. And I can see the other paintbrush, the one on the left, is narrow because it is smaller than the bigger paintbrush. I could use the language of size by saying one paintbrush is wider than the other or I could say one paintbrush is narrower than the other. Now let's compare the width of the things in these pictures. I've got a picture of a wide road and I've got a picture of a narrow road. I know the road where the arrow is going to is wide because it has two lanes and is bigger than the road in the other picture. And I know that this road where the arrow is pointing now is narrow because it only has one lane and is smaller and thinner than the road in the other picture. I could say the road with two lanes is wider than the road with one lane. 
Or I could say the road with one lane is narrower than the road with two. Let's have a look at comparing these photos. I found a picture of a narrow river and I found a picture of a wide river. I know that this river is wide because you can see how big it is compared to the mountains that are either side of it. And I can see that this river is narrow because it's much smaller than the river in the other picture. Well done everyone, you've done so well today. Your challenge now is to go around your house and look for things that are wide and things that are narrow. If you put them next to each other, you should be able to tell. I'd like you to ask a grown-up to take a picture or you can write it down if you want to and you can post it in our school post box, send it to our school WhatsApp or send it to our school email. Good job!